What's the best car review channel in the UK? An Auto Express. This is the new Tiguan, and the latest version of the best-selling VW on the market promises better looks, better efficiency, and more tech than you'll know what to do with. One of the best things about it is the fact that it now uses a very clever artificial intelligence-based voice assistant system that incorporates ChatGPT. To use it, you just say, uh, hello, Ida, and ask it a question. What's the best car review YouTube channel in the UK? From ChatGPT, there are several popular car review YouTube channels in the UK, including CarWow, Top Gear, and Auto Express. Each channel has its own unique style and content, so it's best to explore them and find the one that suits your preferences. The best. Right, so even though it sells very well, clearly the new Tiguan is absolutely awful and with zero redeeming features. But because I am an elite reviewer, with an amazing channel, I will continue this review and tell you exactly what I think of this car. It's awful. Right, let's start with the front end while we're giving opinions, <laughs> shall we? They've tried to make it a bit more friendly, but to me, in this R-Line spec, it just looks aggressive, doesn't it? Especially with this kind of huge blacked out area at the front. There's a slightly more subdued, elegant spec with a bit more chrome going on, but um, yeah, quite boisterous looking, isn't it? A couple of things that are okay, I suppose. You've got this light bar at the top, which illuminates on some versions. Doesn't quite connect to the DRLs just up there. It's got some new headlights, which are really good, apparently at night. They illuminate your path ahead without blinding other people. It's also got a better drag coefficient. It's more efficient through the air. It drops the CD value from 0.33 to 0.28. They've done that by removing the grill from the previous version up here and replacing it with a glass panel. Do we think it looks better than the previous version? It's a good question. I suppose the better question is, why are we not on the list of the best car review channels in the UK, you absolute piece of sh At the side, they say it's more athletic and expressive with a few more curves in the bodywork and door handles that are now lower down than before for some reason. Oh, and the car is now 30 millimeters longer. The name Tiguan, in case you're interested, comes from a combination of Tiger and Iguana. And if you look at the rear windows, you'll see little Tiger and Iguana graphics as a little Easter egg. Around the back, you get a nice little roof spoiler, which again aids with the car's improved aerodynamic efficiency. You also get a new LED light strip, which illuminates on both the R-Line and Elegance trims. And you get the option of some chrome trim down at the bottom, although you can also have that in black. Now, the important thing, because this car is now longer than it was before, you get quite a lot more boot space. What you're looking at here, is 652 litres. That's 37 litres more than the previous version. It's so big, in fact, that it gives you all the space of a Nissan Qashqai, plus about half the space of the boot you get in a VW Polo. Nice usable space, flat loading area, although, because this is the plug-in hybrid, unfortunately, the battery and high voltage components do eat into that space a little bit, but there's still enough room for your charging cables and a few storage areas on either side. Plus, the seats fold flat fairly easily. There is a bit of a catch with that massive 652 litres. You only get it if you slide the rear bench forward, which means that if you're in this position and you're a grown up, then you have very little leg room. Well, absolutely no leg room in my case to benefit from the full boot space. But it's okay, I suppose. If you've got kids with short legs, then that means you can bung your giant bags and your prams in the back no bother whatsoever. It's nice to have the option, isn't it? You can also have the option of reclining the rear seat. It's a bit fiddly to find, but there you go, look at it. It moves forward and backward to give you the ideal seating position. Apart from that, you've got a nice big panoramic glass sunroof, which actually opens. That's not the case on a lot of modern cars. You also get these very clever little pockets for your mobile phone, so you can store your gadgets in there. You've also got two Isofix points and an armrest plus cup holders that pop out. Oh, that didn't sound good, did it? <laughs> but nice to have that, plus two USB ports, rear climate controls, and heated seats in the back. Not bad, I suppose.
At the front, they've gone very, very digital with the new generation of the Tiguan. The first thing you notice as a driver when you sit down is the new display in front of you, which is very customizable and shows you all your information in a very clear way. You've also got a new head-up display, which is a new addition for this car, and it works incredibly well. But then you cast your gaze to the right hand side slightly and then you are met with this absolutely enormous screen as standard it comes with a 12 inch display but you can opt for this 15 inch screen which is just massive is it too massive i think it's a little bit distracting if you ask me imagine getting pulled over by a policeman for using your mobile phone when you've essentially got a 65 inch telly on your dashboard credit to vw though because the functionality in it is very very good the home screen is divided up into tiles, so you can have your navigation in one tile, your energy flow in another, your charging and your media in others, and you can customize these and move them about as you wish. At the top end, you've got these customizable shortcuts, so you can pick shortcuts that give you quick access to particular elements that you want. The bottom is reserved for all your climate control features. The new climate control buttons are still capacitive, but they're now illuminated, so you can actually see them at night, which is nice. And the whole system is very, very responsive as well i mean look at that it's just zipping around no problem you've got an eight core cpu and a ton of ram to run all this stuff and it works really really effectively in fact i'd go as far as to say that in the past vw had some of the worst infotainment systems in the business and they've now moved on to apart from the chat gpt element getting things wrong to having one of the best shall we say there's another thing I want to point out actually on the subject of buttons. The steering wheel now has physical buttons and down here you've also got a physical knob. Now it does three things. One, it controls your volume control or if you swipe across left or right it can... Um, sorry I've never used it before I got it wrong. Oh that, that's the atmospheres, right okay. So atmospheres, volume and driver profiles as well. By default, you can control your volume, which sounds great. But then if you tap it, you can then choose between your driver profiles, which is eco, comfort, sports, or individual. And then if you swipe it, you can then switch between your different atmospheres, which are basically illuminated themes for your ambient lighting. There's lounge, joy, energetic, minimal, me. It's a nice idea. We've spent ages begging VW for a nice, simple knob. But what they've done is given us the most complicated, nonsensical knob in the world. Yeah, must try harder. Okay, so what is the new Tiguan like to drive? First impressions are very positive. The minute you jump in this car, what you feel is a car that's very, very easy to get on with. The seats are nice and comfortable, very adjustable. You sit up nice and high if you're short or you can drop the seats down really low if you're taller. So you always get a nice good view out the front of the car and the steering is nice and light as well. So this is gonna be a very maneuverable car. I also like the fact that the drive selector is now mounted on the steering column, which makes it very easy to shift between drive, reverse, neutral, and park. Just sticking with the seats for a moment, they feature a 10 chamber pressure massage system, which is a bit like having a person with 10 hands massaging you in the back. On a lot of cars, the massage feature can feel like a bit of a gimmick, but in this, genuinely, it does feel quite effective and is a nice feature to use, particularly on a long journey. The car is also very quiet and refined. You've got double glazing on all windows, so it minimizes the wind noise and the road noise incredibly effectively. One of VW's proudest additions to the new Tiger Iguana is an updated suspension system. DCC Pro now features two valves on the shock absorber instead of one, which now allows it to smooth out not just compression when the car goes into a bump, but also rebound when the car comes out of one. I wouldn't say the system is a game changer, but what I will say is that the ride quality is very good and so is the body control. What's really cool as well is that you can actually go in the menu system and customize the exact level of suspension damping that you want. You could do this with the previous DCC system as well, but now the spread between the firmest and the softest setting is much wider. You can customize specific settings into a specific drive mode. So for example, if you live at home near particularly rough set of roads, you can dial in the softest setting and activate that whenever you get near home to make sure that the car is in the right setting for you. Quite clever. 
Remember that funny little knob that I mentioned earlier on the center console, the one that lets you change the volume and your drive modes and the so-called atmospheres? Well, it might seem like a gimmick at first, but I've had a bit of a play with it and it does a bit more than you might expect. So, one thing you can do with it is assign different playlists in Spotify to each of the different atmospheres. So for example, in Energetic, you can assign a fast Energetic playlist and have that activate whenever you select that particular atmosphere. It will also enable different sound profiles to match. So for example, in Energetic, you might have a bit more bass and a bit more volume. And conversely, if you select, let's say, Lounge, it will play the music at a lower volume and with less bass. And also so select an appropriate playlist to match. The idea is that, let's say, for example, you're coming from a football match and your team's just won, you might want to choose energetic because you're happy and you're celebrating. Conversely, if you're coming from the same match and your team have just lost, you might want to put it in lounge and have things a little bit more laid back. Right, engine options. There are two ETSI mild hybrid petrols, a diesel and two plug-in hybrids, one of which I'm driving today. These have different power outputs, but both use a 1.5 liter petrol engine, an electric motor, and a 19.7 kilowatt hour battery to provide improved fuel economy and a very good EV mode. The plug-in hybrid system in this car is actually really good. I'm not the biggest fan of plug-in hybrids in the world, but in this, it does work. When you activate the electric only mode, the car is super quiet, super refined, and you actually forget that it's got an internal combustion engine under the front, because when you accelerate, generally it stays in electric only mode without activating the internal combustion engine. VW say that the car will get up to 100 kilometers or 62 miles in EV mode, which I kind of believe it's actually indicating right now that I'm getting four miles per kilowatt hour. And let's not forget, it's got a 19 kilowatt hour battery pack, so that's working out to be about 80 miles. I would take that with a pinch of salt, but let's just say that having the EV mode in this car is very, very handy. It means you can drive this around on daily local journeys pretty much as an electric car without having to utilize the internal combustion engine. In terms of total range, they reckon around 800 kilometers or 500 miles on a full tank and a full battery pack. One other feature worth discussing is the updated Park Assist system, which lets you walk your Tiger Iguana like a dog. You can pair up a mobile phone and use an app to guide it in or out of narrow parking spaces up to one car length at a time, which might make it easier to get in and out of if you're parking somewhere awkward. So, would I recommend the VW Tiguan? Ultimately, I think it's a great car. It looks fantastic. It's very, very spacious, particularly in the back and the addition of the plug-in hybrid system is brilliant. It means you can drive it around locally in EV mode and still go further afield if you really want to. The technology will take some getting used to, but if you're willing to take the time to sit down and get your head around the various systems and the overall interface, then ultimately I think what you'll have is a pretty rewarding experience. I can't fully recommend it because the car doesn't recognize greatness. It doesn't know who the best automotive YouTuber is in the world. Auto Express. But apart from that one glaring emission, which I hope VW fix, then yeah, I think it's pretty decent.